Good evening, and welcome to a fun night of food and food-related activities. Um, before we begin, I'd like to ask everyone to uh, turn off all cell phones, pagers, beepers, anything like that. Uh, like in Prof Professor Sadaway's class, if one of them goes off, we'll probably kick you out. <laughs> so uh, this is the third annual MIT Hillel Lock Home and Tashin debate. Uh, last year was the second annual MIT Hillel Lock Home and Tashin debate. Um, and again, for the second year in a row, the victor was not determined by our debating. So we're here again tonight. Uh, we've assembled a crack team of debaters, as you can see on my left and right, to help answer the question, which is better, the latka or the humantashen, the Hanukkah latka or the Purim humantashen? Um, first, I'll just go through the, the basic setup of the night, of the evening. Uh, I'm going to introduce our, our esteemed participants. Uh, and then we're going to go through each six presenters having seven minutes to talk about the latka or the humantashen. Uh, which you see to my left. Um, after which, we're gonna have a four minute break, a uh, two minute break, sorry, to formulate rebuttals and then two minute rebuttal from each side. Uh, and we'll follow that by voting to see which, in fact, you like more, the latka or the humintashin, given, given the debate you've heard tonight. So, uh, first we'll start with Team Latka, which is composed of President Stu Susan Hockfield, uh, Professor Stuart Licht, and Professor Walter Lewin. President Hockfield attended the Universi University of Rochester as an undergraduate and earned her PhD from, the, from Georgetown University Medical School. Uh, Dr. Hockfield has researched the development of the brain and pioneered the use of monoclonal antibody technology in brain research. Dr. Hockfield joined the faculty at Yale University in 1985 and was named a full professor in 1994. She served as dean of the graduate school and then as provost from 2002 to 2004. And last year, she decided to come here. <laughs> She was selected as the 16th president of MIT in August 2004, and we're very glad for her for par participation tonight. <laughs> Professor Stuart Licht attended Princeton University and graduated with a BA in chemistry in 1992. He completed his PhD in biochemistry from MIT in 1998. Since July 2002, Professor Licht has served as an assistant professor in the chemistry department. His research focuses on the mechanistic chemistry of enzymes and ion channels. <laughs> Professor Walter Lewin uh, received his PhD and his uh, bachelor's at the Technical University of Delft in the Netherlands uh, in nuclear physics. He moved to MIT soon afterwards, became, becoming a full professor in the physics department in 1974. Professor Lewin's research in astrophysics has yielded interesting and important results, which I'm sure he can describe to you, but I can't. <laughs> this is the second time Professor Lewin has participated in the Lakahum and Tashin debate. Thank you very much. <laughs> Three more introductions to go, and then we can get started. Uh, on the Hum and Tashin side, we have Professor Mark Kastner, Professor Donald Sadaway, and Professor Jeremy Wolf. Professor Mark Kastner graduated the University of Chicago in 1967 with a BS in physics and completed his PhD there in 1972. He was named the Donner Professor of Science at MIT and appointed head of the physics department in 1998. He also served as director of the MIT Center for Materials Science and Engineering from 1993 to 1998. Professor Kastner currently works on the condo effect of electrons, once again, I have no idea, uh, <laughs> in collaboration with the MIT Department of Chemistry. Thank you very much. Professor Donald Sadaway completed his undergraduate work in engineering science at the University of Toronto in 1972 and completed his PhD in chemical metallurgy from the University of Toronto in 1977. Professor Sadaway was named to the John Eli F. Elliott Chair in the Chemical Metallurgy in 1999 here at MIT. He's been awarded the MIT Graduate Student Council Teaching Award five times. He teaches one of the largest classes at MIT, 3091, Introduction to Solid State Chemistry. Uh, this is the Professor Sadaway's third year. He's participated all three years in the La Commentation debate, and of course, we thank him for that. <laughs> and finally, Professor Jeremy Wolf, 
uh, graduated Princeton with a degree in psychology and earned his PhD at MIT in 1981. Uh, he worked as an associate professor at MIT until 1991 and has been a professor of ophthalmology at the Harvard Medical School since 2002. He continues to teach some introductory psychology courses here at MIT. He is currently researching visual search. This is the second year, uh, not consecutively, Professor Wolf has participated in the Lakaho and Tashin debate. <laughs> so thank you very much. So with that, I'm done, uh, and I'd like to call uh, President Susan Hockfield to the podium to give the first uh, presentation on the Hanukkah latke. I think we'll speak from, my team will speak from our seats. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Can you hear me? Well, I have to say, uh, it, from time to time in my job, I'm faced with extremely difficult problems of seemingly infinite complexity, as we are here tonight. <laughs> um, my background is in neuroanatomy, so I, I try very hard to parse these problems down to the most simple forms possible. And tonight, as often happens with difficult problems, the simplicity emerges instantly. We're going to get the slides here? Maybe. But tonight's debate really is at heart not a debate between two different kinds of food, two wonderful different kinds of food, but between two forms, two geometric forms. Next slide. The circle. <laughs> and the triangle. So the circle, as you all know, is noble, proud, and perfect. And in, case, in the case of the locket, it is a potato of power. And I have to confess, it is the choice of presidents. I did a. <laughs> I, I took a straw survey, straw poll of some of my fellow presidents, and indeed, we all agree. <laughs> the circle reigns supreme over the triangle. On uh, the next slide, some of the great sages of our time have actually commented on the subject of the debate tonight. Plato opined, let us then study superior pancake forms by means of problems as we do geometry, as do I. <laughs> let the things of the potato pancake go if their study is to make the naturally intelligent part of the soul useful rather than useless. <laughs> And I am certain I need not remind this audience that the circle has particular salience tonight, today being 314 National Pie Day. Yes, yes. Other great sages have proclaimed the perfection of the latka. One of my most favorite sages, Lewis Carroll, in his tome, Alice in Wonderland, said, the lion and the unicorn were fighting for the crown. The lion beat the unicorn all round the town. Some gave them latka, perfect and round. Some gave them humantashen and drummed them out of town. <laughs> now, again, this audience, I need not remind, there are great circles at MIT. The circle is at the very heart of MIT. We see it in the dome, or the domes. In our seal, you can see at the bottom left of this slide, <laughs> one of our favorite outdoor spaces, the dot, and of course, in our very wonderful OCW, Open Courseware. Um, I would say, I will <laughs> address my pledge. I would never. I would never, ever eat a humantashen, and I would not even want to come close to one. This is my pledge. Now, I have to confess, I may not be able to stay for the very end of this most ferocious debate, but I have every confidence that in my absence, you will side with the latka. Not only because I am the president of this great institution, <laughs> but simply because the circle is a form vastly superior to the triangle. I rest my case. Thank you, President Hockfield. But I'd like to remind everyone in the audience that uh, the voting will be by secret ballot, so <laughs> hopefully there will be no retribution. Um, <laughs> now I'll call Professor Kastner to uh, talk about the humantagen.
Well, you know, um, I had to study this very carefully before I made this presentation. So I have looked through the literature uh, and tried to find as many examples as I could of Lacas and Humantash in, in physics, and I'm here to report uh, on what I've discovered. Um, so first of all, <laughs> Obviously, you may think that's the divergence operator, but it's really the Hamantash operator, as everyone knows. Now, this was an early example, but when we come to modern physics, um, we have to uh, turn to Richard Feynman, one of our most famous uh, alumni, who made these uh, what are often called Feynman diagrams, but actually, they're Hamantash diagrams, as you can see. Um, uh, We've had many famous physicists graduate from MIT. Murray Gell-Mann uh, proposed that protons and neutrons are actually made of quarks. Uh, and uh, two of our faculty, Jerry Friedman and Henry Kendall, uh, discovered quarks inside protons. Uh, Sam Ting and also a faculty member, and Bert Richter, one of our alumni, discovered what's called the charm quark. Uh, Quarks are these things which are inside uh, protons that are held together by gluons. Um, and this is a picture from the Nobel Prize of uh, uh, quarks being hold, held very strongly inside uh, a proton by the strong force, which of course is really the Humantash force. <laughs> Now, uh, our most recent Nobel Prize winner was Frank Wilczek, and here he is at his press conference showing the scaling behavior of quantum chromodynamics, which is clearly Humantash and dynamics. <laughs> so there are many, many examples in modern physics. Um, Alan Guth, who is actually here in the audience, explained to us the early universe uh, and, and that um, most of the matter in the universe is dark energy and dark matter, but if you look at these, uh, any three of these stars, <laughs> you can see that the universe is really mostly dark Hamantash. <laughs> now I looked very hard for ev evidence of Latkes. I, I honestly did, and I found one. Uh, if you look here, <laughs> if you look here at the, uh, end of the latka, you can find a little string theory. <clears throat> but you know, um, most physicists don't take string theory very seriously. Uh, um, they don't think it has any bearing on reality. And in fact, they would say that string theory is to physics as Kabbalah is to Talmud. <laughs> Some of my colleagues will kill me for that. <laughs> But, you know, I was wondering how it could be that there was so little success of latkes in physics. And I really struggled and I asked many people. And finally, I turned to an expert who gave me his candid opinion. Thank you, Professor Kastner, for that non-controversial piece of uh, insight. Uh, next, I'd like to call on Professor Licht uh, to talk about the, about the Hanukkah latke. Thank you. Thank you uh, for the invitation. I will not beat around the bush about this. I represent a lowering